Welcome back to the Corporate Rejects Podcast, and welcome if this is your first time listening in. I am your show host, Amanda Davila, and I am excited to continue to provide support and empowerment through your journey to entrepreneurship. Welcome to the Corporate Rejects Podcast. I'm here with Dizzy Liberatore, art director and owner of Visions to Images. Welcome to the show, Susie. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to hear uh, more about how you got started, what you do, and a little bit more about like what branding actually is. I know it took me a long time to really understand what branding is, and sometimes I'm still trying to figure it out. And I know there's a lot of business owners and future business owners that feel the same. So I'm super, super excited. So um, can you introduce yourself a little bit? Tell me about you and your family and a little bit about your life. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I always had the creative side in me. I've always been like doing photography. I was always kind of picking out colors and fonts on AOL Messenger, trying to design my space stuff. I was doing dance programs. I was a dancer. My dad worked at Kodak. So we always had the latest and greatest stuff. So I feel like it's always been like a creative aspect. And um, I went off to college and didn't know what I wanted to do. And then um, what happened was I thought I wanted to be a preschool teacher. And I was like, no, I don't want to be a preschool teacher. I don't want to take Spanish. I don't want to do all these other stupid classes because I'm not good in school and I'm not good at math and I'm not good at all that. So then they did like that little counseling test and they were like, oh, you should be a graphic designer. And I've always had in this mindset, oh, do they make good money? Is this legit? And so I started taking classes and it was totally different. These classes in college, by the way, they're not like computer classes, like they're hands on and they're fun and different, but it was still, I don't do the same stuff I did in college that I do now. So it's weird how college makes you take all that nonsense. But, um, I took, um, I got a bachelor's in fine arts and right out of that college, I kind of landed into an agency role and really learned the ins and the outs, saw a lot of mistakes, saw a lot of success, saw a lot of things. And I loved the creative field that the agency had. So I loved being able to kind of have different stuff happening all the time, right? Like there wasn't, we had a niche, but we always had stuff going on. It wasn't the same every day. Whereas when I worked in the corporate and marketing, it was just not as fun and exciting because they wanted everything was in the lines. And so then um, I went through a divorce. And so once I left corporate, my son got diagnosed with autism. And then I had like mono and my life kind of just fell apart. And I was like, this is the one I'm going to start my own business because I realized like I wanted my own business for the longest time, but it wasn't the right time. And so now it's the right time. And I went through a divorce and realized after going through the divorce, you know, you got to get into that hustle mode, that grind mode. Like, it's just you, and I'm not going to give up on my dream. So, within that time frame, like, I was able to really grow and scale and understand the value and understand what my services were and help really um, get businesses off the ground and running and still be a single mom, essentially, and take care of all that. So, that's my life story. I love it. You really hit a lot of points there with especially, you know, going through a big traumatic time in life. And instead of just letting it take over and stop you, you really pushed forward and made your dream happen. And it's amazing. So tell me about a little bit more about like what your business is right now. So my business, gosh, that's a hard, like my business is amazing. <laughs> It's an agency, a creative agency. So we do all the different things. Like a business needs to really get consistent branding and cohesive and get seen and get visible and generate those leads. And so how do we do that? We do that through branding, through logos, through print design, through graphic design, through digital design, through social media, email campaigns. We do SEO, all the things. So it's really figuring out what a business needs and where their goals are and how to get them there. Every client's different. There's not one container fits all. We're not like, oh, you need to buy this to get this. Like we really dive in and see what they're doing and what they can be improving on and go from there. Cause I call it the branding wheel where there's like different filters where they're at. And we find out like 
what's missing in their branding puzzle. Like that's a lot of what is unique with the company is um, we really figure out the pieces that are missing in, inside of a business's branding and or marketing. Wow, that, that's amazing. I love it. So at what point do you find most businesses come to you? Like what point in their business? Most of the time businesses come when they are more established and have been around for a little bit. Typically when people come, when they're just starting off, they can't afford the services. They don't know what they need. They don't understand the things. And they're like, oh, I just need a logo. But so many times I even there's blog posts that say, if you don't just need a logo, you need more than that. So when people say, I just need a logo for this business that I'm starting, like that's not when they're trying to really come to me. Like that's the starting point where they need to go and DIY it themselves or hire somebody on Fiverr. When they come to me, they're pretty much established. They've been around for three years plus. They're really looking to get to that next level, to get that scaling, to get that consistency. They have employees, they don't have an internal marketing team, or they only have like one person on the team for marketing. And they really need that next level. So typically it's like, if they have a location, they've been in business for three to five years plus, like that's where the sweet spot is. That's when a lot of people come to me for anything, really, even websites, branding, social media, like they really know that they need that. And they're not just looking for like a VA necessarily. They're looking for that agency. Okay. So do you hire contractors in different areas to help with big projects or do you do everything yourself? Girl, no, I do not do everything myself. Are you kidding? me? <laughs> no, if I did everything myself, I don't think I would be able to li- like live, sleep, eat, drink, nothing. Like it would be, no. Yeah, we, um, I have a team. They're kind of, gosh. So I have like a web developer and an SEO. He's one person. And then I have an accountant assistant person. And then... Um, I have like a writer or an editor, like she does either or, and then um, another website kind of a smaller end website person. Like if they don't want the most expensive website, then there's some, some other tier kind of thing. So yeah, there's a bunch of people that are in place for different services. Nice. Okay. And they're all independent contractors. Correct. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. You are outsourcing and it's amazing. It's that's definitely a good thing, right? Yes, I love outsourcing. <laughs> and it's such a game changer for your business. And you're right. If you did it all yourself, first of all, you can't specialize in every single thing and be the best at it. Mm-hmm. And second of all, yeah, you can't be a mom and a business owner and have a life, <laughs> all of the things, if you're doing it all yourself. I was just laughing in my head because I was thinking about, you know, um, my branding. And when I came to you for branding help through your group program. And at that point I had had like 10 different logos I made in Canva and I was changing my logo every few months and I was changing my, uh, air quotes branding, (laughs) um, you know, dependent on my mood. Like, right. oh, I feel like doing this. Oh, I feel like doing that. And it was so inconsistent. And I remember having you look at my Instagram and you're like, what is going on here? <laughs> like, what is this? Um, and that was like what I needed. Like, I needed someone to be like, what is going on here? Like, there's nothing consistent here at all. And yeah, you really helped me. And now I don't have to think about it at all. I have my custom templates for my business and mm-hmm. I just give you know, the copy to my VA and she's able to put them together and everything looks cohesive. It's amazing. Um, and whenever I decide to, you know, go in and do something myself now and do something different, it's always like a disaster. And I'm like, why am I disobeying what Susie told me to do? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I love it. So before you started your own business, what type of other jobs did you work? When I was in high school, I worked at pizza places and stuff like that. But before, um, like out of the college area, when before I did my business, like I worked at the agency for a long time. Okay. And then I worked in a corporate marketing place. Like it was corporate marketing team kind of thing. And I only worked there for like less than a year. But those were my two like main experiences other than like those stupid jobs when you're a teenager. <laughs> So I love it. I mean, you went through like the traditional, you know, go to college, get the degree, 
and you started working in corporate and you saw that that wasn't the life you wanted and you decided to take what you knew and start your own thing. And I love that. That's what corporate rejects is all about. You know, yes. you, I you, love the. <laughs> thank you. I mean, you are a corporate reject. Like you get a <laughs> sticker, you get a sticker, <laughs> but, um, and eventually a t-shirt, <laughs> but yeah, I, I love it. Like a lot of people don't think that they have anything to offer in the online world, but literally like I haven't met anyone that doesn't have some kind of experience that won't, you know, won't translate to the online world. And, you know, it's a lot of people, you know, have like the old school thinking of like, oh, you want a business cards designed or you want a website done. Like you have to go meet with the person, you know, in your town and sit down with them and, you know, map it all out. And that's just not true anymore. And even more now, everything's online. So it's amazing. So I'm always like telling people like, tell me what, tell me about your like past experiences. I will find something that you can do online. <laughs> oh, it's true for sure. Yeah. I mean, the online is so powerful. There's so many things, but you want to make sure that it's what either you like or you're passionate about or whatever. And it's not just doing it because it's not going to be feasible in the long run. Right. Yeah. This episode of Corporate Rejects is sponsored by Outsource Like a Boss. Get tasks out of your head and off of your plate. Outsource Like a Boss is my no BS program guiding business owners through the process of figuring out where they're spending their time each day and outsourcing the tasks. You can start gaining back 10 plus hours per week right away. I absolutely love this program and I have dozens and dozens of other business owners who have already gone through it and are absolutely loving it and enjoying their life as an entrepreneur more because they now know how to outsource like a boss. I give you all of the scripts and templates and the exact process that I use to interview, hire, manage, and fire many, many, many employees over the years. Go to outsourcelikeaboss.com or click the link in the show notes. So I know there's a lot of people who um, I talk to that are very creative and they like to do design type things, but they don't, again, they don't really know what they can do in the online space. And I was thinking about like, so I just booked paddleboard lessons because I really want to learn how to paddleboard. And my husband and I tried on Kauai one time and it was a disaster. So I finally, you know, like, okay, we're going to pay for lessons because, you know, they say like, we can teach you how to do it in one lesson. You're done. You know, it's like the path of least resistance, right? Like, yes, I have to put some money out, but I'm going to know how to do it. And I'm going to be, you know, have a place to start and be good at it. I always thought like I can snowboard, so I can paddleboard, you know, I can, I'm a good, you know, swimmer. I'm good at balance. Like I'm good at all these things. Yeah. So no, I'm not a good paddleboarder without someone teaching me. So the reason I'm telling you this is because I'm curious, like if there's, someone out there who is really good, just like doing basic designs, like putting together logos or putting together brand boards and Canva, because I meet a lot of people who are like really good at it. They have talent. They don't realize it. What would be like a good path for them to follow? Like the path of least resistance, kind of like the paddle board thing. Like what can they do to get into the graphic design space? I mean, there's a lot of different ways. When I first started off, I was always like trying to look on Fiverr for jobs or Upwork or trying to just get word out. I feel like having a coach of some sort or having, like if you're going to start off as a VA, you can totally do like graphic design and stuff and be creative enough to not be dangerous, you know? Um, I mean, Canva has been a great tool and a lot of times people don't have Adobe programs and I still help them and guide them with the Canva stuff so that they can have that look and feel. They don't, I mean, the next level, yes, I would recommend always doing Adobe programs and becoming familiar. I mean, there's tons of free training. There's like lynda.com. There's some trainings there. I mean, I would educate yourself as much as you can, do some YouTube stuff, maybe go get an internship or like work for like cheap for like an agency. Um, When I first started off before I officially like called myself an agency, what I did was typically reach out to agencies and say, Hey, I'm a freelancer. Here's my portfolio. Here's my resume and try to see if I can get my foot in the door that way and get experience and see like 
a whole nother view of things and still be a freelancer and be my independent person. If that's the route they want to go, if they want to go into the actual agency and work for somebody, that's a whole nother topic that could be something different. If you're not going to go to college and you want to learn more, there's tons of resources all the time. And of course, having a mentor or a coach or a business coach, if you want the business end of things and do that graphic design, um, finding, I mean, you teach, I'm sure you talk a lot about like Facebook groups and finding tribes of people and just getting your name out there, having a good website and good branding. Like if you want to be hired, you have to be portrayed as how you want to be hired. So having, if you want to sell graphic designs, you need to have an amazing portfolio and a website of some sort or something to that effect and making sure that you're putting yourself out there. It's like you're becoming your own boss, but you can still be a freelancer and not an agency owner necessarily, but you're not at that level of a VA. So like you're that next level up, but Adobe programs can be a lot of money and or complicated. So just fine tuning, like what you can do and how you can do it. And yeah, there's trainings all over the internet. So awesome. What would you say is the best investment you've made for your business? <laughs> um, that's a good question. I was going to say like Adobe products, but actually no, probably. I mean, that's like the important one I need. However, the best investment I've made is hiring Renee Rebar as a sales coach, business coach, whatever you want to call her. Because before I went into my agency mode, I was calling myself a VA and cutting my value and cutting myself short. I and mean, I was just creating designs in Canva. I didn't invest in Adobe at that point. I didn't invest in all the tools that I knew I needed because I didn't know where my business was going to go and how it was going to be played out. After realizing my worth and realizing what I was capable of and that I wanted to build a team and that I wanted to hire people, subcontractors, and really give a luxury brand and experience to customers is really when... I was like, oh, Renee is like my sales coach. Like I couldn't, I, I need, you need a mentor, you need a coach, you need somebody. And that's the best investment anybody can make. Absolutely. I agree 100%. Okay. So what do you have planned for 2021? Girl, I don't know. 2021, what do I have planned? I need to do, I mean, of course my agency is going to keep growing. That's like a given. But I'm trying to do more launches. And I don't know, that just makes my head. Like, I feel like I've launched stuff and or tried stuff in the past, but it's not feasible and or not stuff. Like, I want to create an actual course and or group program that is a great price, but not as much hands on necessarily. They can get some group training like once a month or something like that. But I don't want... And this could be for the smaller business owners that we talked about. So I feel like that's like my next level. Of course, keeping up with coaching, consulting, and done for you services, um, really just going in and keeping connections growing and keeping up with all of that. Awesome. I feel like you're really good at doing that with connections. Like you're very, very visible on social media and talking to lots of people and stuff. And I see you all over the place. I see your blog posts and your new offerings and stuff. I love it. Okay. So my last question is where can people find you? They can find me visions, number two images.com. Perfect. And what are they going to find when they get there? Yeah, they're going to find all my services. They can sign up for um, how to win your um, clients over in seven days through good branding. Essentially, it's like a freebie. You can download the workbook. And yeah, they can find all my services. They can find videos, blog posts. They can find everything they need to know. And they can go there and find a social media course as well that links to it. But if you go like it's Visions to Images, um, Creative Services on Facebook, I don't use Twitter anymore. I'm not on Pinterest. Instagram is visions to images and then LinkedIn. Awesome. Well, this was amazing. And I had a lot of fun learning more about you and your business. And I know that my audience is going to love you as well. So thank you very much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening in. I am trying to reach as many moms as I can to help support and empower them in their journey. So if you enjoyed this episode, I would love it if you would leave a five-star review on my Apple podcast page. 
I know as busy women, entrepreneurs, and moms, our time is extremely limited and valuable. So to sweeten the deal, I am buying the next 10 five-star reviewers their next beverage at Starbucks. Instructions are in the show notes, and I am so grateful for you. I love supporting moms, and I love moms supporting moms. See you next time.